Hello and welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm going to do a uh, flip through of my uh, bullet journals, all five of them. Um, I have actually filmed this before, I filmed it last night, hated it, decided to go back through and film it again. Um, we'll see if it's better this time round. So <laughs> let's go back right to the beginning of my bullet journal um, journey. I started off with a nice cheap journal from Amazon, I think it was about £5, um, it's yellow, because I love yellow, um, it had bees on it, because I guess they're yellow, um, it was cheap and cheerful, I didn't want to spend loads of money, because I didn't know if it was something I was going to stick to and if I was going to like it, um, so yeah, £5 for a bullet journal from Amazon. I used whatever pens I had and just kind of got on with it. I think the only other thing that I bought was some washi tape, some rainbow washi tape. Um, okay, so my first one, in all of my bullet journals, I have photographs of my family and pictures just because I love them and I like looking at photos of them. Um, here's my index. This one had a pre-printed index already sorted. But I, from, if I remember rightly, yeah, it didn't number the pages, so I had to go through and number all the pages. What's that about? Um, I don't use an index anymore, but um, because it was my first one, I wanted to do everything correctly, or how I saw as being correct. So um, you can see I filled it all in, but I can't say I ever went back and used this to find particular spread, uh, spreads. I tend to just flip back through find them that way. Um, my key, um, kind of taking Ryder Carol symbols, adjusting them ever so slightly to fit what I wanted, and uh, I did some colour coding. If you have a look down the end of the book, you can see I used uh, washi tape to colour code each month, and I made like these tiny little tabs so I could find my month easily. Um, that's part of the reason why I stopped indexing as well. Future log, straightforward, got 12 months. Uh, washi tape here, just to make it look pretty. Straightforward. Um, huh. Birthday spread, I don't use this anymore because I just put it all on my future log. I don't see the point in redrawing it again. I know lots of other people do like birthday spreads, but. I never referred to it, so there's no point in having it again. And I got a, a um, list of addresses there. Uh, TV shows, tracker. Um, yeah, again, coloured washi, colour coded. Uh, crochet projects. My original plan was to um, track my crochet projects, but as you can see, I didn't really use it, so this is like the one and only time I ever drew a spread for it. Um, you'll notice that in this journal in particular, there's lots of things that I tried that um, didn't work and then I just didn't continue them because I saw this as a trial and if it didn't work, I knew not to bother doing it again and I used it to try lots of different things out. Movie list, book list, don't really use them much either. Uh, period tracker and my August page. So I colour coded, I did red for August and I put uh, washi tape down the page for each one um, just so I could tell that it was August I guess. Here's my first monthly traditional calendar layout, habit tracker down here. I tracked habits for myself and my two daughters here. Um, very simple, no doodles not particularly pretty, it's very functional. Um, some key tasks down here as well, very different to how I do things now. And this is my first weekly. So you can see I had fallen down the trap of watching YouTube videos and uh, Pinterest and decided to try everything all in one spread. So I have uh, weekly goals like a box for each day with tasks to um, to complete but I was on summer holidays because I was um, teaching 
at the time and I didn't have that much to do so I had small boxes. Um, a box for memories, uh, things I was waiting for, so like happy mail, um, meals, breakfast, lunch and dinner, uh, to-do list, brain dump, dump um, next week box and a recipe in the middle here. Uh, then I go into some journaling, more like traditional journaling. We went to the zoo and some photos in there. Um, one of the main reasons I went into a bullet journal was to kind of keep a record for my girls as to what we got up to when they were little. Um, so they can look back on these when they're older. Um, new way of tracking films and TV shows. I didn't really use it. <laughs> but again, as I said, if I didn't like the way I did it, I'd try a different way, draw it out differently. It's a real trial. The second month, and decided that I wanted to go with a theme. So I went with, um, I think I was doing cartoons for this one. So this is Adventure Time. So um, my monthly page and habit tracker. And then here's my monthly. And you can see I've already dropped like the monthly task list. That's not on there anymore. And now on my weeklies, I have a space for a quote from the show. I also started doodle challenges, so this is um, the first doodle challenge I ever started and completed, oh so cute doodles. December bucket list, things I wanted to make sure I did during the month, and Christmas films. This is washi tape, yes. Yeah. Um, my first doodle challenge that I failed. I did not complete that one. Uh, this is like a moving spread, so stuff that, um, obviously I was coming to the end of my bullet journal stuff I wanted to move over and ideas for uh, new spreads. Some pictures that my daughter drew and asked me to stuck in. Um, yeah, some doodles from then. And washi tape samples. And that's it, really. So that was my first one. You can tell from um, <laughs> from flicking through that it was a real trial and error. I really used it to try and work out what worked and what didn't. Um, and as I went on, they became more decorative and I, um, I added more pictures and things as we were going. And that's kind of the direction it took um, because that's where I got my enjoyment out of it. Yes, it helped me stay organized and track certain things, but um, it was also kind of a way of relaxing. So, first journal. Um, one thing I will say to anyone starting out, um, don't be afraid to try new things. If it doesn't work, it doesn't matter. Don't draw a whole bullet journal in one go. It might be fun, but two weeks down the line you might decide that actually you hate it and you have to start the whole thing again or stick with something that you don't like. And then if that's the case, you just won't use it. So it's not going to work for you do it a week or a day at a time. Try different things, see what works. So, that was number one. This is number two. Um, I got this one as a Christmas present. Scribbles That Matter, a step up from my five pound bargain from Amazon. Paper is nicer, a lot nicer. Um, and this one lays flat, so it was easier to work in. And it, the pages were ever so slightly bigger. They're wider even than this book. So, let's open this one up. Uh, photos, family photos. This is the um, 
Tully symbol from Game of Thrones because we're the Tully family. There we go. Uh, key, colour code. I carried on the colour code in this one and I also had like a themed uh, washi tape for each month. This one goes up to June, so I stopped doing it in my, uh, May for some reason. And again, you can see from the side, I have colour coded up to this point. And I had my little tabs going as well, but I stopped using them because I didn't seem to need them. Uh, index, index the whole book. Uh, goals, managed to achieve all of my goals. Um, and my resolutions, apart from the reading 12 books, I really kind of fell off the wagon of reading last year and I need to kind of climb back on because, yeah, I, I don't know that I read any. <laughs> um, I did a, a week trial, I say a week trial, I, managed to Friday, from Monday to Friday, um, of doing daily. So I had like a page for my weekly stuff, habits, meals, um, things I was waiting on to do. And then I did like a little section for dailies. I just, I didn't have enough to fill it. And it just seemed like a complete waste of space. So I stopped, it was the epic fail. Trying is the first step towards failure. <laughs> Um, different style of weeklies this time. Decided to kind of forego the boxes and I missed the doodles on the weeklies so I started doing these lovely uh, dragons in the background here and I got my uh, habit tracker but it's more like a doodle, um, doodle challenge tracker to make sure I did my challenges every day. Um, this one you can see I've got these bold outlines this is really kind of where that uh, those bold and thin line work that uh, I do started from um, I love bold outlines so things stand out but I also like using the thinner pen for more intricate bits which you'll see kind of as you go through uh, March I loved this the space theme, purple and yellow. I thought it looked really good and I had this lovely washi tape that kind of had the right colours in it. Oh, and I got a monthly list here rather than a traditional calendar. So a list of dates and then I got a box for what I was listening to, what I was watching and what I was reading during the month. And then I changed also my habits to doing individual habit trackers rather than a, a big table of them because uh, it looks nicer. Plus it meant that for me looking back on it, it was easier for me to see which habits I was succeeding at. Because I can see my no alcohol, I managed for the whole month. It, it allowed me time to go back and look at those. Big gratitude spread, so I had more time or space for lettering. Um, I changed the way I tracked my Instagram posts and did this more of a um, like a habit tracker I guess in the sense that these were things that I wanted to post on a monthly basis and these are things daily um, and these were weekly um, and then in April I had a go at Dutch doors so I decided to have space at the top for my week um, to do for each day and a weekly to-do box and then my habit tracker and then on here I use these more like a daily so I had like the weather my husband's work shifts and then kind of use this to kind of journal what I'd got up to throughout the day
yeah this was my last week of using Dutch doors because although um, it worked quite nicely and it looks really nice like aesthetically I, I really like the way it looks um, I was finding on these pages like this one um, where I was cutting the pages I had this lovely ridge to kind of overcome and it was starting to bug me and I didn't like it so I stopped doing Dutch doors at this point and kind of changed it so I was still doing the same setup but instead of having the week uh, the daily pages one after the other I had them kind of on the second page so I start with my weekly page on here and then Monday and then with the rest of the week on the second page um, and then this was my moving list moving to a new bullet journal so a list of things I wanted to keep um, the order that I wanted to put kind of my yearly trackers in or the big trackers in at the beginning and then things I'd learnt from this bullet journal and the previous ones so um, no more washi um, on the side of the monthly pages um, Dutch doors are great but use a lot of pages and leave a ridge um, washi, washi page at the back is helpful uh, I need more space for daily spreads um, don't choose the theme or colours too far ahead as you'll only change them for something else. <laughs> uh, this is your Bujo. Do not hold yourself to rules that you set. One. Uh, no one will know you've broken it. So I think that was something that I would set myself, these rules. And of course, it didn't matter if I broke them because they were my rules. So the only person that could hold me account to them was me. And if I'm not enjoying following those rules, why do them? Lesson learned. So that was bullet journal number two. Number three, another scribbles that matter. Exactly the same book, because I love them. And it's yellow, and it did the job. I also like the fact that I had, I got a whole year in three of the exact same bullet journal more photos, um, postcards from Katie Abbey, love her puns, snakes on the plane. Um, I've got a key this time, I've added birthday symbols and reverse from TV show, but uh, no colour code and you'll notice there's no um, kind of colour coded months down the side anymore. Um, and I started indexing and then stopped at page 58. Um, here's my cover page, first time I've done one, um, Bullet Journal Volume 3, I've got the dates and this is the one where we finally moved house and I decided I'm going to do this for each of my Bullet Journals from now on, um, just to kind of sum up uh, what happened during that time. One of my favourite pages, um, things they say, things they do, jotting down all the stuff that my girls get up to during this bullet journal. I had one in the last one as well. It's colour coded, so each girl has a colour. Um, not all of them are funny. Some of them are just sweet things that they, they do, and you know, cute things, but a lot of them are quite funny as well. And um, I will certainly enjoy looking back on these, even if they don't when they're older. Um, films to see. I did a whole double page of this, and you can see I barely used it, um, so in my next bullet journal you'll see that I reduced this down to one page. Same for my TV show tracker, I've done a double spread here, but in my next bullet journal I used just uh, kind of one page because I didn't use it. And into June, I really love the way this month looks with the big bold outlines and the colours, I use coloured pencils for this one. Um, I did this for one week. I drew the outline in pencil and then each day coloured it in, uh, added the stickers and the lettering as a rundown of each day. Um, because I can fit more on the page and I thought it would look really cool. And it, I think it does look really cool, but it took forever to do. And I decided that after one week, it was enough. Uh, 
um, July, one of my favourite months actually in here, I did one book July. Now the idea of one book July is to kind of reduce your planning system down to one book. Um, since I already do everything in one book, I decided to reduce my supplies. So I allowed myself uh, two Statler pens, a 0.1 and a 1.0, and a yellow and grey Tombow. And that was it. So no stickers, nothing in here apart from what I could do with those pens. It's all um, based on Dr. Zeus. And you'll see here, I've carried on that list of dates as well for the month rather than the traditional calendar. Um, I've adapted my weekly layout ever so slightly again. Instead of having um, the individual boxes for each day of the important things I needed to do, like I had here, um, I've now got them at the top of each day. So I've got um, the weather, my husband's shifts, and uh, important to-dos, and then that I kind of journal for the day. And again, these are all doodles and lettering that I had to do because I wasn't allowed, or I didn't allow myself to use stickers. I had a daily chore list, and I condensed all that down into that habit tracker. So it, it allowed more space for the doodle. Uh, for this habit tracker, I used watercolour and um, really like the way it turned out and actually the paper held the paint pretty well. I mean, you can see on this page there's no bleed through at all. A, you can probably see a little bit of ghosting on it, but there's no bleed through. Um, this side, there was a couple of spots where it bled through, just where I had a little bit too much water on there. Um, but most of it was really good, so I think if you are doing watercolour, the idea is in this particular book is not to get the paper too wet and kind of mix your colours in your palette rather than on your paper. Um, but I covered the back of this with uh, stuff for Aria's birthday, so wrapping paper from her gifts and unicorn stickers and stuff, all the stuff that she really liked at the time. This is kind of where my doodle challenges kind of stop. I was doing loads of them. Um, started to reduce them down um, and then realised that actually I wasn't enjoying doing them anymore so I just I stopped. It haunts me a little bit that it's not finished but um, I didn't want to go back to it. I didn't fancy going back and trying again so I just left it where it was. You can see when I find a weekly that works I stick to that layout for a while until I, I get bored. Um, this week is a different week. I started um, as a PR girl for Laura Jane Style and her sticker shop and she sent through a sticker kit um, to her PR girls to have a look at. Um, I'd never used a sticker kit before because I haven't had a planner that kind of lends itself to them and somewhere in my head I was like, well why can't I use them in my bullet journal? Um, there's no reason why you can't use them in your bullet journal at all, so I did. Um, I tried to use as many stickers as I possibly could. You've got habit trackers in here, um, picture boxes, um, full box checklists and stuff all in here. Um, I tried to use, as I said, as, as much of the kit as I possibly could. Um, and it looks alright, but I missed my doodling. And it was quite quick to set up, but the one thing I did learn is that sticker kits aren't for me. I um, I miss drawing and adding it, making it my own. Uh, this month I go back to more traditional journaling, so I've got a list of what I got up to and important tasks. Um, and then this is like a, just writing about my day. More Aria's artwork. You can see she loves belly buttons. Aria and these footprints. Um, so that was bullet journal number three. Bullet journal number four. Same notebook. Um, and this is the last 
third of the year, really, so from October onwards. Pictures again. Uh, no bullet code, no colour code, no index, to the point where I've even stuck things on them because I don't use them. Um, this is where my cover page is going to go. I need to come up with a title for it, so I haven't done that yet. They're going to love me for this photo when they're older. Um, here you are, see on my last one I had a double page for the films to see and the TV shows and I just condensed them, put them onto one page each um, and I still didn't use all of this. Meanwhile, my last podcast on the left tracker is getting bigger. <laughs> I did a master meal plan here, um, completely useless. I know all these things that we do and I never look back at it so I won't bother doing this again. Um, this is why I started adapting my themes a bit and I went for all Halloween-y films that I like to watch during October. And I feel like I really pushed my uh, artwork this month. Uh, November, um, I went for TV shows I was watching at the time. Kind of played with the rules a bit and flipped pages round. Uh, I think, yeah. Um, I carried this style of gratitude um, over into December as well, where I didn't have boxes to fill in, I just gave myself some space. Because some days I had more things to fill in than others. So rather than having one box and trying to fill just that one box, it, it meant that I could put as many things down from that day as I liked. Um, and I adapted my social media trackers and cleaning trackers just to make them easier to draw up because the circles look wonderful, but they take a while. And at this point I was doing so much, I didn't have time to spend drawing up all those circular trackers. So I did it this way. I went back to a traditional calendar layout for December just because there's so much that happens during the month and I knew that there would be several things for certain days that I'd have to note down and sometimes that list view doesn't give you enough space to do it. So um, I drew up a proper calendar and it allowed me to put in my Elf on the Shelf ideas as well. Um, this is my Christmas to-do list, like my bucket list. You can just see how my char uh, my style has changed from my first journal. There you go. There's my bucket list, and then here's my bucket list, and then here's my film list, and here's my film list. So things have kind of completely changed. It's a lot more um, arty because that's what I like. So you can see in amongst my weekly spreads, I'm still using like running lists and to-do lists and stuff for things that need to get done um, if I can't fit them in on my weekly. So it's not all you know beautifully laid out. Some of it is just completely purely fun. Um, this is my new bullet journal plan. Um, I still have. I, well, I finished this one with just over, just under 50 pages to go because I knew I had a new bullet journal coming for Christmas. Um, so I wanted to make sure that I knew, again, just like in the last one, what I wanted to move over, what I didn't want to um, include, and a few things that I wanted to try. So I've got um, my future log period tracker, films, I wanted to put an escape room tracker back into my new book journal, um, last podcast tracker, um, specific TV tracker, like um, the iZombie one. I really like the way that looks, I wanted to do those, some swatch pages that I needed. Um, things they say and do, and my Instagram tracker, things that I definitely need to put in. Things I didn't want to bother including, um, films to see page, and a master meal plan. Um, what I want to try, um, like a la lush bath bomb tracker, um, things I want list, TV shows to watch list, 
um, and I've already got some ideas of the things I want to watch kind of from Netflix um, that I can add to that list. So I've still got a few pages left of this and I am using it still for shopping lists and anything that I need to jot down but essentially this bullet journal is finished um, and that comes to my last one. Uh, new year, new journal. Um, I'd say that I would have happily carried on in that book um, for January but I had this one coming and you know what it's like when you get a new bullet journal and you have to kind of dive straight in. Yeah, that was me. So I got this for Christmas. Um, it is just perfect. It's from um, Citrus Book Bindery. Lovely couple um, that hand make uh, journals to essentially anything that you want. They have kind of set styles and then you can change, choose your cover colour, you can cho choose the way you want it stitched. So I've got, um, this is the Avalon, so I've got the beautiful rainbow stitching down here. Um, mine's a chunky, so you can choose how many pages you have. I went for the most because I was hoping that I could get at least halfway through the year with this one. You can choose whether or not you have um, the ribbons, you can change, uh, choose the type of cover you have. They have some with designs on and some plain and stuff. Um, you can also choose the type of paper. So I went for 140 GSM because it was the thickest um, that I needed, I think, for my pen work and everything. Um, they have lined, grid, dot, watercolour paper. They have a whole range, so it's really worth checking out. And they're really, really great customer service. Um, so, no index and no key because I don't need them. I learnt from my last bullet journal that I'm not using them so there's no point in putting them in. So I've just left this for my title page which I'll fill in it once this one is complete and I dive straight in. Um, change from a habit tracker to, uh, sorry, not a habit tracker, a gratitude tracker to 31 memories. So I'm writing down a memory for each day of the month. And then I'm still jotting down to do's for the particular day and then just journaling for the rest of it. Uh, this is next week set up, ready to go. And that's it so far. And I have tons of pages, there are, two hundred and eighty seven pages, um, I've used this as like a spacing guide and then this is like my pen test page, um, so that's it, this is my current journal. I'm hoping that I can use two of these to get through the year and that will kind of do me but um, as you can see my journey has just completely and utterly evolved over time. I've learned what I like in a weekly, I've learned what I don't like in a weekly, I've learned uh, what kind of style I want my weeklies to look at, I've learned what spreads I use and what spreads I don't use and which ones are worth uh, moving over and which ones aren't worth moving over and this is kind of the whole point really of bullet journaling for me is to help me stay organised, keep track of certain things I want to keep an eye on um, and give me an outlet to draw and be a bit arty um, and allow myself to change when I want things to change and to try new things without worrying whether or not it's going to look good or not. Because at the end of the day, if it doesn't look good, the only person that has to look at it is me. I don't have to show the world whether or not, you know, if it looks rubbish. It's up to me. And yes, I have some really lovely pages in here, but I also have pages that are just completely functional and are just to-do lists and don't look pretty at all and I expect if you look out there at everyone's bullet journal there will be pages that look like this 
and then lots of people will have pages that look beautiful. But that's the point. It's your bullet journal. You do it your way. Don't worry what everyone else is doing. Worry about how you like it and how make it so that you're going to use it. So there's my little bit of advice for anyone who's trying it out for the first time or those that have already been doing it for a while. Don't worry what anyone else is doing. Don't worry what anyone else is saying. As long as it works for you, it doesn't matter. So there you go. There's my journey through all five bullet journals. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, hit like and subscribe. And hopefully I'll have some more planning videos coming along soon. Bye.